does it come back? So, um, Anna, I'll start with you. Um, I feel like I can't really answer when it comes back. Um, we're, you know, with everything being very uncertain still and, um, you know, not sure when the vaccine a vaccine will be around. Um, I think we're going into 2021 really focused on continuing to enhance our digital experiences. Um, when it does come back, which I do think a lot the live event will come back, but definitely in a hybrid format, you know, there will still be an emphasis on having that in-person engagement, but I think a larger emphasis will be placed on that live stream experience, that live digital component that's, you know, uh, uh, feeding off of that live event experience. So, you know, we've had a taste of the type of audience we can get with digital events outside of just the Beltway. You know, previously the majority of our events were in DC. Now we can reach broader audience. So there's going to be a bigger push to get a larger live stream audience tuned in to the content, but also how do you continue to engage and build that community outside of just a, you know, smaller live event. Um, so I don't know if Sal or George have any other premonitions on when live events will come back, but those are my two cents. Are you going to say something provocative, Sal, like it's never coming back? Or you're... <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I, I was going to let George go first. I put his neck would go first. Okay, so I will start with... with go ahead. No, you go ahead, George. My apologies. That's one of those three strikes thing, I think. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this particular question, Connie, and I think we will see the live event start to trickle back in midpoint next year. I think it's going to look vastly different. And I think that those initial attempts to do so are going to be largely unsuccessful. I look to schools as kind of the pioneer or model in this place. You know, they will have had months of groundwork trying to create safe zones for some people, but also enhancing the distance learning element simultaneously. So I think that they're the best place to look for an answer there. It, me personally, and the way I viewed this since the beginning of the pandemic is in those sort of risk mitigation terms that I mentioned at the top of this discussion. You know, if we are hosting as an organization, these top level officials in you know cabinet level agencies or the Department of Defense, are we going to be really willing to put those people at risk just simply to put on an event? I that makes me slightly uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to step into a place where I'm putting someone else in danger. Great point. Great point. Uh, Sal, that, that was, it, Sal, it was just a great answer. No, it was a great answer. It's so thoughtful, right? That. Are we thoughtful as an event producer is going to be one of the critical questions of the next two years. And I look at it, I'm, I'm going I'm to try and be as controversial as possible, Connie. Uh, the, the first thing I will tell you is I don't think the stuff like CES is ever coming back the way it is. Do I want to go with 100,000 people to Vegas to hang out in 20,000 person chunks when everybody flew in from around the world? I don't know that that level of comfort will ever exist again. But do I think you might regionalize CES and maybe I'll go to a smaller representative uh, event in eight cities? I think I might do that. 